Well, welcome everyone. Great to see you and have you here. Uh, today's session is about aligning values with your with your career. So I think 2020 and many things are making us reevaluate our choices <laughs> and our decisions. Um, and so this is a great time to get grounded into what's really important to us as we're seeking, you know, the next twist in our career path or whatever that may be. So we'll get to talk a little bit more about what you hope to gain from today as well. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about who the stranger is is talking at you. <laughs> um, so uh, my name is Tina. Um, I am one of our career coaches um, and I work for an organization that focuses in on educational consulting, but also just supporting people and leveraging their skills and education for their career path. So that's that's my expertise that brings me um, here with you all. We are partnering with Skill Up to just continue to support people as they're they're navigating the uncertain career path that we are under in the nation. We're going to be talking about aligning um, aligning your values with your career um, in in this process. Um, but this is really an, an open coaching session. So I will be asking you questions. You'll be engaging and just thinking intentionally about your values and your career path. Um, and so there'll, there'll be an opportunity in there to just kind of play around and think. Um, I measure my success on whether I get you stumped. So if you don't know the answer to something, that means that I've asked you a good question and paused you and made you think about something that you haven't had time to think about before. So it's okay to not know the answer. It's okay um, in this process to be like, oh, I haven't really thought about it. That's okay, because that's, that's what I'm striving for. <laughs> you're, you're setting aside extra time. I want you to be thinking about things in a different way. Okay, and I feel you. I work with a lot of people in, in hospitality, and even if you still are employed in that area, it's changed so much. So it's, it's everyone is questioning whether that's right for them. Did you want to say something more about that, Kate? Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, I, yeah, I'm thinking of maybe switching careers. I was initially furloughed, and then as of Friday, they sent out an email that the whole sales department was being laid off. I see someone else, Lori, or in hospitality too. And it's when you only know one industry, it's really disappointing. Yep. I, I've actually been working with a career coach and he wants me to do informational interviews, but I am completely lost because it's like, what are my interests? You know, mm. it's one field. It's like, okay, I could do these informational interviews, but in what, <laughs> you know, when you know one field, it's just so frustrating. So, and I'm really good at what I do too. It's not just my position with the whole sales department. So it's been really rough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that honestly. And I feel like there's a lot of that going on. And, and what you said there at the end is really important that it, that people who are laid off now or who ha are being forced into making transitions, it's not because we're not skilled and we're not valued, but it's, it's because of, you know, what's going on in the world um, and that impact. And so I think that's a really important piece to not lose track of for Kate and everybody in this room is that it's not about us and the value that we bring that's making these things happen. I um, most recently worked as a caterer for the last four years prior to a work injury last year, which has forced me out of catering. Mm -hmm. um, can no longer lift anything. I have two rotator cuff injuries, um, kind of a drag. I oh, <laughs> can't yeah. carry groceries either anymore. <laughs> um, <sighs> all the signs of getting older, I guess. Um, but anyways, prior to that, I was in dental for 33 13 of those years as a chairside assistant and 30 as a dental office manager. And um, alongside that, I've been a caregiver for 37 years, which I can no longer do at this time either, unless it's just companion mm. care. Um, mm. So currently I'm getting retrained through vocational rehab and um, I'm taking data analytics right now as more of an auditor uh, because I'm waiting on adaptive equipment. Um, so, and it didn't come in time. So I'm really more of an auditor of the class at this time because I'm not really able to participate with one screen. 
And then um, secondly, I'll be starting a, a tech sales um, class and then um, an apprenticeship so I can get my foot in the door whether I have the data skills or not and then continue to work on the data skills once I get in. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. It seems like there's there's a lot of themes. We, we know we're, we're never sure who is going to be able to attend um, presentations like this, but it, it does sound like we have a lot of people who, for a variety of reasons, are facing career transitions and really taking the opportunity to consider, you know, what are, what are some new paths that uh, will potentially be available and how do I best leverage my experience, right? We're not, we're not throwing that, that out, um, but how do, we, how do we start to translate that experience and leverage that going forward as well? So welcome everyone. I hope you at least feel like you're not alone, right? I'm already feeling not alone in this with just you all sharing your introductions and um, there are commonalities in here that are important um, in this process. I think any time that life provides us an opportunity to pause in this, in this process, it's important to make sure that we're aligning with ourselves um, as we go through this. So um, I know that it's probably really stressful in your shoes as you're trying to explore and figure out what is going on. Um, but as a career coach, it's a really exciting moment for me to be able to, to share it with you um, because it's an opportunity to really look and make sure that the next step forward is really aligned with what matters to you most. And the thing that I have to face every day is that as a career coach, I'm preparing people for jobs that don't exist today. Jobs are different tomorrow than they are right now. And so um, that's hard. How do I prepare somebody for work that I don't even know exists? Well, the only way to do that best is by making sure that your choices are aligned with you and that you're getting um, fulfillment and satisfaction out of that. Often, our titles can change, our positions can change, they can be very different. Um, but if they're leveraging our skills and talents and are aligned with the things that are most important to us, we can fall into positions we never thought were possible when, when it is really connected to us. We can also feel that unexpected discomfort when you fall into something that isn't aligned for you. Um, one short example that I'll share is for a long time, I wanted to be a lawyer. I'm the oldest of six. I always win arguments. I wanted to fight and fight for people and make sure that people got defense. And then when I started getting into that work, I'm like, wait, this is more research. This is a lot of paperwork. This is a lot of time I'm spending in the office and I'm actually not, not being able to advocate for people in the way that fulfills me. And so I fell into different work um, that more aligned with, okay, I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to advocate for people whose voices get lost in the mix. Well, I can do that in other work. And I found a great opportunity through career coaching to be able to provide that and help people advocate for themselves and really align with that. So that's just a little bit of my story, but it's an important element that our titles change, even in your career path, right? Your titles have probably changed, but what doesn't change is what's most important to you in that process. So from today, I want you to walk away with thinking more about what you value and what's important so that that can be the foundation for the career exploration that you're looking at, for the career components that you're thinking of and exploring. So what is this value word that I keep using? <laughs> what does that actually mean? Well, values are about those core characteristics about you that align with what is important in your life. So values and um, the handout that Patrick has posted in the chat, on the second page of that, it has some values in there. Let me just um, briefly screen share that so that we can look at some of the values here. It's not the easiest to read. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so here are some examples of values. Now, 
values are not necessarily connected to your skills and strengths. They're not necessarily connected to that. But when you get down to the root, what do you value? And sometimes we find our value in that discomfort. Um, I've worked for organizations um, where I felt that discomfort. Service is, is a value of mine that's really important. I want to be of service to other people and I want that opportunity. When I've worked for organizations that didn't respect that value, I could feel that rubbing against me. And even though the work I was doing was all right, the lack of, of alignment in that value made me eventually move on to a different opportunity. These are a short list of the values. There are lots of other values out there, but values are those words like adventure, independence, contribution, right? Recognition. Sometimes we value those things. What's important to you? When you think about the moments where you've been the most happy, what, what have been part of those elements? So we're going to dig in and we're going to have you identify a few of those um, in this process. So feel free to pull up the handout and have that at, at the ready. I'm going to go back into not sharing so that we can see each other's faces in this process. So I would like to do is actually have a brave volunteer in this room of strangers to help me demo an opportunity to get down to your values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a few questions and ask you to verbally respond. And we're going to pretend like everyone in this room disappeared and it's just you and I. And then what I'm going to do is after we talk about that process, then I'm going to take you all through it so that you can experience it. But I want you to hear what that sounds like before we dig into you digging into it on your own. So who would like to be the brave volunteer to share and answer some questions? Oh, Brenda's ready. Okay. You, you all were too slow on this. Brenda, Brenda's got it. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Partly um, it's because I'm an extrovert. So <laughs> I just... I, I love sharing things and whatnot. So I'm ready for you to go ahead, fire away. Okay, excellent, great. So for the rest of you, I just want you to listen, maybe even look at that second page of that handout. What values do you hear coming up as Brenda is sharing? Brenda, you're not required to share values. I just want you to not look at the document and to just be in the moment with me in these questions, okay? Okay. All right, so Brenda, you shared a little bit about your work history already and about what you're, what you're doing and you're looking and you're getting training for new opportunities. I want to just kind of think of yourself as a holistic professional. What motivates you in the work that you've done? What, what's that? What motivates you? Being able to help people become healthier or to be able to manage what they're dealing with in their health issues. Mm -mm. What about that is important to you? Mm, I think it stems from growing up with a mom who was always sick my entire life. And um, I was her caregiver from a little girl on, as well as other people professionally. But um, I was always getting books from the library, trying to cheer her up, bring some joy to her day. Um, I guess that's really what it is, trying to bring joy to people so that they don't have to be in such a, uh, you know, depressed state or not feel good about their life. Okay. So, Brenda, what I heard you say so far, and I'm taking notes, that's why you see me looking down. Sorry, I should have mentioned that. But what I hear you say so far is that you, you know, your career and, and what's important to you is really kind of assisting people as they're dealing with, with challenges in their health. Um, and part of that is, is helping them, but also part of that is, is providing joy um, for them as they're dealing with these challenges. Did I hear you correctly? Yes. Okay. So when you think about your, your life and the impact that you want to make, if you're able to do that, what, what does that look like? What does your life look like when you, are, when you are thriving and doing what's important to you? Well, I feel, it makes me feel important. Um, like I have some use here, um, mm. which I didn't feel like very much for the last year. <laughs> it's been kind of frustrating with, this, with these injuries. Um, and unfortunately for me, 
I don't really have anybody that can come and help me out while I'm going through this because while receiving no income, how could I pay somebody to help me? I couldn't do it. So I had to struggle through this by myself. Um, and there were many things that I found that I couldn't do. And it was very um, frustrating because I'm very independent. <laughs> and I had to start asking for help, which made me a little depressed because I'm used to taking care of me all my life. I've been the caretaker. I'm not used to being in this position. <laughs> so Brenna, what I heard in here, I heard a couple of things multiple times, and I don't know if you have a pen and piece of paper around you, but I, I would recommend, okay, I would recommend pulling that out. Um, there are a couple of values that I heard in there um, that I want to call out and see if, see if they connect with, you, with what you shared so far. Um, you know, there's a value around, um, around uh, recovery, like, like um, joyful recovery is, is almost the way that I would say it, right, in this process, in that difficult um, aspect. There's also a value around having a purpose and, and being important to others that you not only want for yourself, but you want for others that you are impacting as well um, in that process. And then you didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, but it sounded like this was also important here is the factor of independence. So in your caregiving, in some of that that you've been providing to others, you've been trying to find ways for, for them to be independent. And mm -hmm. that has come out in your own recovery of how do I ask for help, but also maintain my independence in this process. Yes. It, are my, am I hearing some of those values? Do those resonate with you a little bit? Yes, because I think it gives you a sense of dignity when you can have some independence, even in spite of the fact that you might also need some assistance, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Brenda, for being our brave volunteer to dig thank a you. little bit more into values here. Great. So you gave me a lot there. It sounds like teaching stands out to you most as the thing that um, that you feel most fulfilled with, really teaching things that are practical that people can use. Um, you also have this the, the second loves of technology and data, although they come with some hangups, which everything does, right? There's pros and cons to everything. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about technology. What What's important about technology for you? Well, like discovering new ways to use something. Um, just like if there's like a new, a new program or a new app, like I love to learn it. Mm. Um, yeah, I just like, 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 I like learning about new technology, how to use it, how to make, use it to make my life better, use it to make somebody else's life better. Um, what else about technology? Um, yeah, I like the challenge of like, if I don't know something, I can find a way to figure it out. So like a, a lot of times with technology, like, a lot of people shy away if they don't know how to use it, but like that, like that drives me <laughs> mm -hmm. to learn it. When do you lose your patience with technology? Because that challenge aspect is making me think that there's a discrepancy between your you're losing your patience and wanting to be challenged by technology. Yeah. So like, if I try something, like say it's like a new program or something. And I'm like, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to learn about this. I'm going to use it. But then like when I can't figure something out after like multiple tries, I just want to be like, forget it. Like I'm just done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, right. So like my, I guess my perseverance with it is not quite there. Well, I wonder if it goes back to um, what I'm hearing you about just practicality, right? You like teaching people that something they can put into practice. You like discovering technology when it makes life better, but when it loses that aspect of making life better, that's when you lose your patience. Is that yeah, fair to say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about data too. What's what's important to you about data? What's, what's the value behind data for you? 
Like, I think data gives you like a picture of what's going on. If it's, you know, the right set of data, obviously, but like you can just, you can look at the data. Like I like the analysis part of it and you can come up with ways to solve a problem. Like when I was working, when I was, I was an instructional coach. One of the things I had to do was look at all the school data and see like, okay, what are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? What are we gonna do to address, you know, address the gaps, again, address the weaknesses and come up with a plan of how to solve, you know, to solve the problem based on what the data is saying. So that part of it, I enjoy. Like the, the looking at the data, the planning, coming up with strategy. The part I don't like about it is like, it can get like a lot, like the details of it. Um, because it, sometimes it's just so much, like if I'm, <laughs> if I'm sometimes if I'm looking at data on a computer, like I can't see myself looking at it for eight hours a day, right? Um, and that's the thing, like I could do it for like a couple hours, come up with the plan, the strategy, and I'm good, but I can't look at it all day. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, this theme of like action, you know, and, and practicality still comes up for me, right? Because that's that's why you're looking at the data is you want to be able to problem solve and strategize. And you, you, you don't want to be locked in a room with data, but you want to leverage that to influence, to really kind of influence your own life and other people's lives. Exactly. Okay, okay. So let's leave the what you want what you're interested in behind. So let's set teaching, data, technology behind. What matters most to you? When you think about Definitely future path. Freedom. Like being able to have that flexibility. Like I can make my own schedule. I don't have people watching over me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so freedom, flexibility, independence, I would definitely say is one of them. Like I like, I don't like, like friend, I guess, I don't like asking for help. <laughs> um, like I like to know that if anything happens, I can like take care of myself. I don't have to depend on anybody. Mm. Um, so that independence piece is big for me too. Mm. Okay, okay. So what, what I'm taking away from what you've just kind of briefly shared with me, and, you know, we're not all the way to the root of all your values yet um, in this process, but we are uncovering some of them. And um, so I'm looking down here at my notes and what, what it really just keeps coming up um, back. And so write these down for yourself um, is that contribution. There's a piece of contribution. There's a piece of um supporting the improvement of life practically. So it's not it's not about like in theory, the ideal world would be this. No, it, it's about practical skills um, for you. And then you, you started to hit on some of those at the end that um, for you to thrive and be successful, you need to be in an environment where you have freedom where you have flexibility, where you have some independence. So those are all really good values to write down for yourself. What motivates you in relation to work? I mean, I've been in the industry for 20 years and I was in the healthcare industry for 10 years. So what I've figured out is the feeling of satisfaction of getting my job done in a day. I am not an in and out box kind of person. So, but every job I look forward back to healthcare is your basics, your Microsoft, your Excel, all of the basic computer programs. So I guess my struggle is now being 30 years past healthcare, but I mean, at least healthcare changes all the time, is taking those courses again, mm -hmm. um, which at least the skill up is helped and <clears throat> Goodwill actually has a good program too for getting certified for that, but it's frustrating. You know, the technology as much as like Shannon Marie said, it's good, it's frustrating when you don't, yeah. you don't you know you're up against a block and you you try to go to it. So I take it in little wins. Um, and, and and everyone's and when I 
what I'm choosing is to be happy in this next half of my life to do the job that's going to make me happy. I don't know what it is. Just like you said, you're not pinpointing uh, a, a job description, but I know that I find satisfaction in a job that gets done from point A to Z. So that's what I'm looking for. So at least some with healthcare, you know, I maybe I'll be a Walmart greeter because that'll find me satisfaction. But that's what I'm aiming at. So yeah. I, I kind of found some tools that work for me already to get to this point. Now it's fine tuning it all. 